The Bristow Campaign was a series of minor battles fought in Virginia during October and November 1863, in the American Civil War. Maj. Gen. George G. Meade, commanding the Union Army of the Potomac, began to maneuver in an unsuccessful attempt to defeat Gen. Robert E. Lee's Army of Northern Virginia. Lee countered with a turning movement, which caused Meade to withdraw his army back toward Centerville. Lee struck at Bristow Station on October 14, but suffered losses in two brigades and withdrew. As Meade followed south once again, the Union Army smashed a Confederate defensive bridgehead at Rappahannock Station on November 7 and drove Lee back across the Rapidan River. Along with the infantry battles, the cavalry forces of the armies fought at Auburn on October 13, again at Auburn on October 14, and at Buckland Mills on October 19. The Confederates had not achieved their primary objectives of bringing on a decisive battle or preventing the federal reinforcement of the Western theater, and Lee and his officers were much demoralized by this failure. Background <inaudible> 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 After the Battle of Gettysburg in July, Robert E. Lee retreated back across the Potomac River to Virginia and concentrated behind the Rapidan River in Orange County, Virginia. Meade was widely criticized for failing to pursue aggressively and defeat Lee's army. He planned new offensives in Virginia for the fall. Early in September, Lee dispatched two divisions of Lt. Gen. James Longstreet's corps to reinforce the Confederate Army of Tennessee for the Battle of Chickamauga. Meade knew that Lee had been weakened by the departure of Longstreet and wanted to take advantage. Meade advanced his army to the Rappahannock River in August, and on September 13 he pushed strong columns forward to confront Lee along the Rapidan, occupying Culpeper, Virginia, following the Battle of Culpeper Courthouse. Meade planned to use his numerical superiority in a broad turning movement, similar to the one planned by Maj. Gen. Joseph Hooker in the Battle of Chancellorsville that spring. However, on September 24 the Union had to deplete its forces as well, sending the 11th and 12th Corps to the Chattanooga Campaign in Tennessee. Lee learned of the departing Union Corps, and early in October he began an offensive sweep around Cedar Mountain with his remaining two corps, attempting to turn Meade's right flank. Meade, despite having superior numbers, did not wish to give battle in a position that did not offer him the advantage and ordered the Army of the Potomac to withdraw along the line of the Orange and Alexandria Railroad. Opposing forces Union Confederate Battles Topic Auburn October 13 to 14 on October 13 Maj Gen JEB Stewart was on one of his typical cavalry raids to capture supply wagons and blundered into the rear guard of the Union 3rd Corps near Warrenton Lieutenant General Richard S Ewell's corps was sent to rescue him but Stewart hid his troopers in a wooded ravine until the unsuspecting 3rd Corps moved on and the assistance was not necessary as the Union army withdrew towards Manassas Junction Meade was careful to protect his western flank from the kind of envelopment that had doomed Maj Gen John Pope and Hooker in previous battles in this area brigades from Maj Gen Governor K Warren's 2nd Corps fought a rearguard action against Stewart's cavalry and the infantry of Brig General Harry Hayes's division near Auburn on October 14. Stuart's cavalry boldly bluffed Warren's infantry and escaped disaster. The Second Corps pushed on to Catlett Station on the Orange and Alexandria Railroad. Topic Bristow Station October 14, Lieutenant Gen. A.P. Hill's corps stumbled upon two corps of the retreating Union Army at Bristow Station and attacked without proper reconnaissance. On October 14, Union soldiers of the 2nd Corps, posted behind the Orange and Alexandria Railroad embankment, mauled two brigades of Maj. Gen. Henry Heth's division and captured a battery of artillery. Hill reinforced his line but could make little headway against the determined defenders. After this victory, Meade continued his withdrawal to Centerville unmolested. Lee's Bristow offensive sputtered to a premature halt. Meade was well entrenched, and Lee had outrun his supplies. 
After minor skirmishing near Manassas and Centerville, the Confederates retired slowly to the Rappahannock River, destroying the Orange and Alexandria Railroad as they went. Meade was under pressure from General-in-Chief Maj. General Henry W. Halleck to pursue Lee, but it took almost a month to relay the railroad track behind his army. <laughs> Buckland Races October 19. After defeat at Bristow Station and an aborted advance on Centerville, Stuart's cavalry shielded the withdrawal of Lee's army from the vicinity of Manassas Junction. Union cavalry under Brig. General Judson Kilpatrick pursued Stuart's cavalry along the Warrenton Turnpike but were lured into an ambush near Chestnut Hill and routed. The Federal troopers were scattered and chased five miles eight kilometers in an affair that came to be known as the Buckland Races. Topic. Across the Rappahannock November 7. Lee returned to his old position behind the Rappahannock but left a fortified bridgehead on the north bank, protecting the approach to Kelly's Ford. On November 7, Meade forced passage of the Rappahannock at two places. A surprise attack by Maj. General John Sedgwick's VI Corps at dusk overran the Confederate bridgehead at Rappahannock Station, capturing two brigades more than 1,600 men of Maj. Gen. Jubal A. Early's division. Fighting at Kelly's Ford was less severe, but the Confederates retreated, allowing the Federals across in force. <laughs> Aftermath On the verge of going into winter quarters around Culpeper, Lee's army retired instead into Orange County, south of the Rapidan. The Army of the Potomac occupied the vicinity of Brandy Station and Culpeper County. The five battles in the Bristow Campaign resulted in 4,815 casualties on both sides, including 1,973 Confederate prisoners at Rappahannock Station. Lee and his officers were disgusted with their lack of success. They had not achieved their primary objectives of bringing on a decisive battle or preventing the federal reinforcement of the Western Theater. Meade's army was in a good position, sitting on their supply base and having suffered fewer casualties in their larger force. Pressured by Abraham Lincoln to achieve an offensive success against Lee before the winter brought campaigning to a halt, Meade began to plan his mine run campaign for later in November. <laughs> Notes <laughs>